The purpose of this video is to show you how to clean a 3D scan using Autodesk Mesh Mixer. If you are interested in how to capture a 3D scan or what to do with the cleaned scan, check out some of my other videos. I'm going to assume you have some sort of 3D scan saved as some sort of 3D model file. My scan is from a program called Skinect. It was captured using an Xbox 360 Kinect sensor and exported as a PLY file. To get the scan into Mesh Mixer, you need to import the PLY file. If you're using Skinect, I recommend using the editme.plly file in the Mesh's external directory. Sometimes I have trouble importing the PLY file and I get an error like this. This is caused by Mesh Mixer not liking the way the file header is written by Skinect. To fix this issue, I use another free program called MeshLab. MeshLab is like the Swiss Army knife for 3D programs. It can open anything and export as anything. First, import the mesh with MeshLab. Then choose Export Mesh. You can choose export as if you want to change the file types, but I recommend keeping PLY to avoid going through a conversion which might decrease quality. Just save over the existing PLY file. Now you should be able to import that PLY into Mesh Mixer. There are several ways to clean up the unwanted artifacts caused by a 3D scan. I'm going to show you the ones that I have found most effective and least time consuming. The first thing you should notice is the number of triangles in the current mesh down in the right corner. This count is roughly equivalent to the resolution of a digital picture. The higher the number, the higher quality possible. But just like a digital picture, a lot of times you can reduce this number without sacrificing much quality. By reducing the triangle count, you can make your file size smaller and increase the speed and reliability of editing the file. In some extreme cases, Mesh Mixer will immediately crash when you try to load a scan with too high a triangle density. If this is the case, you'll have to remesh the scan using a program like MeshLab to decrease the complexity. And if you find Mesh Mixer especially slow and your scan file is over 30 megabytes, you should reduce the triangle count. The first way to do this is remove the floating fragments. This is a process you'll want to do frequently as you disconnect unwanted sections of the mesh from your scan. To do this, you must choose the Select menu. In this menu, you can brush an orange selection onto the triangle mesh you'd like to affect. To remove unconnected sections, select part of the mesh you want to keep. Then from the Modify menu, you can change your selection. In this case, we want to expand to Connected. This will select everything attached to what we had selected. Again, from the Modify menu, we want to choose Invert this time. This will select everything we haven't yet selected. Now that we have all the floating parts selected, from the Edit menu, we will choose to discard the selected triangles. Notice how the triangle count is reduced. Since this is a process we will do very often, it is worth our time to pay attention to the keyboard shortcuts listed next to the menu items. Let's undo what we did and try again using keyboard shortcuts. First press S to choose the select tool, then select the part of the mesh you'd like to keep. Now press E to expand the selection to all connected triangles. Then press I to invert the selection, and X to discard the unwanted triangles. Now that we've cleared the obvious debris, you can see there's still a lot of surfaces that were created by the scan that don't exist in reality. We need to remove unwanted surfaces and close all the holes in our mesh. The techniques I will show you now are in order for a reason. The first techniques will seem tedious and may not solve all your problems. However, if you try and skip to the final techniques too early, the automatic algorithms they are based on will have difficulty with the sheer number of problems that they are trying to fix in your model. 
So the first technique is to manually select holes and problems in the model and fill them in. Press S to select, that paint the selection on the feature to be removed or hole to fill. Press F to erase and fill the hole. Mesh Mixer will show you a preview of what the fix will look like. Press A to accept the action or the escape key to cancel. After you fix the feature, press S to start a new selection and deselect the part you just fixed. Sometimes when you're using this method, the hole won't fill. The preview will show you a magenta selection if this is the case. Usually this is because the hole is actually more of a torus or donut shape that connects the outside surface that you want with an inside surface you don't want. In this case, you can press escape to cancel the fill that failed, then discard the selection by pressing X. This should sever the exterior and interior surfaces and make a clean hole in the exterior surface that is easily filled. If that was the only point of attachment of the interior surface, you can remove it with the process we defined earlier. Press S, select the good part, E to extend, I to invert, and X to discard. Sometimes this process won't remove the interior surface because it is connected someplace else as well. In that case, you'll have to find that connection later. To fill the new, larger, cleaner hole in the exterior, press S to select, double-click the edge of the hole with the select brush to automatically select all the triangles around that hole. You should be able to fill the hole now by pressing F and accepting the results. This method has a tendency to fail if the hole is too close to other holes or has too messed up an edge. The technical term for too messed up in this case is non-manifold. In the latter case, you might be able to fill the hole by trying to fill a bigger hole. First select the hole, then press the greater than symbol to expand the selection a bit, then try to fill again. The more you select, the more you will erase in your model, so be careful. Sometimes it is difficult to spot very small holes that lead to interior surfaces. Alternatively, you can select the interior surfaces. Orbit so you can see inside your model. Try to select the interior surface. If you're having trouble, you can click Allow Back Faces to be able to select the opposite side of a surface. Be careful with this option selected. You can unintentionally select your exterior surface. Once you have part of the unwanted surface selected, orbit to view your model where you think it might connect to the surface. Expand your selection one row of triangles at a time by choosing the expand from the modify menu or pressing the greater than symbol on the keyboard. Since your scan is a high triangle density, you can just hold down the greater than key until you see the selection emerge from the hole on the exterior surface where it was connected. Then use undo or control Z to undo the expansion right up to the point at which the selection is barely peeking out or all around the hole. Alternatively, you can erase the selection where you want to keep your surface by holding shift while you paint. Now discard with the X and select and fill the hole by double clicking and pressing F. Remember, you might have left some extra bits of the surface inside your model. If they've been completely disconnected, you can select S, expand E, invert I, and discard X to get rid of them. Once you've removed all the holes and unwanted features you possibly can using these methods, you can move on to the easier methods for all the really hard to close holes. 
first try using the automatic inspector to automatically fix errors. Choose analysis inspector. The orbs point to different problems in your model. Red represent non-manifold edges. Blue is a regular edge and pink is a disconnected small piece. By clicking the orb, MeshMixer will try to automatically repair the flaws or you can choose automatically repair all. Sometimes the automatic repairs fail, leaving a black orb, or sometimes they, the results are not what you'd hope. Both of these occurrences are reduced by using the more labor-intensive methods first. Another option that is really easy to use but definitely erases detail and crisp edges is the Make Solid tool in the Edit menu. This tool will actually create a separate mesh that shrink wraps a surface around your existing mesh. You can adjust the sliders to increase the number of triangles in the final mesh and keep the result closer to the actual mesh. This tool is not great at closing huge holes with jagged edges. This often results in strange strands of mesh that are very thin and hard to get rid of running across the gaps. There's also definitely a loss of detail, but this is a good option especially if you're in a hurry and your end result doesn't need much detail. When you think you're all the way done you can check by running the inspector in the analysis menu or you can use the print tool and see if it recommends repairs. This repair option is also a good last resort if you have small problems that just won't go away. Make sure you delete the original mesh if you've created a solid version, otherwise both will try and print. Now that you have a printable 3D mesh, check out our video on how to use Mesh Mixer to make a bobblehead. Even if you'd like to use your scan for something else or just print it out, that video has some good tips on the final steps of preparing a 3D print.